Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another Super Unreal Power tutorial. Today, we're going to look at how to make your character fly. Now, there are multiple ways of doing this, and we're going to go over a few of them, so hopefully this will be easy to follow, but it's definitely going to be fun to learn. Now, before we get started, we're going to look at some animations. When I was making this tutorial, I had some trouble finding some good free flight animations, so I ended up using an animation pack that I already bought from We Make Your Game on the Unreal Marketplace. So we'll check that out. Now the one we're going to use is uh, this one here, the Flying Mage Set Volume 2. Now with this in mind, I contacted them and asked them about using their animation pack for this tutorial, and they were more than happy to let me use this pack for the tutorial. Now as you can see, they have a pretty good amount of great looking animations, and uh, like I said, I actually already have a few of these, can't recommend them enough. First. Now if you already have some flight animations, that's great to use those, and if you don't have any animations, that's okay, you can still follow along with us. Now first things first, we're going to uh, open up a new project. I'm using Unreal 4.20, so we'll crack this open. And then we're going to go ahead and hit New Project, and we're going to uh, use the third person template. We'll go ahead and use the starter content, and for the title, let's just call this Flight Tutorial. And then we'll create that project. All right. Now to download our animation pack, we're going to minimize this window. Now in this library tab here, we're going to scroll all the way down to the things that we've uh, we've purchased and downloaded. And we're going to find our Flying Mage Set Volume 2, and we're going to add that to our flight tutorial project. And then we're going to scroll all the way back up, find our project, and reopen it. Okay, first things first, we're going to do a little bit of organization. Let's go ahead and uh, select the content folder, and then we're going to add a new folder. And let's just call this uh, flying character. And now that we have that, let's open up the third person BP folder right down here. We'll open up Blueprints, and we are going to take the third person character and we're just going to move that into the folder we just created. Now that we have our animations, we're going to want to change the skeleton to be the uh, character that we're currently using. We'll go to the Flying Mage folder here, we'll open that, Animations, In Place. First thing we need to do is we need to open up our third person character and we need to get to our skeleton here. And uh, To me, this is just an easy way to do it. We'll open this up. We're going to go to our uh, skeleton here. And over on the left here, we're going to change the rig. Select Humanoid Rig. And we're just going to hit Auto Map. And then we'll go ahead and save. And then we'll go ahead and close this out. And then open up Flying Mage. And then Animations. And then In Place. Just to show you real quick, we're going to select our idle pose here, our idle animation sequence. We're going to do retarget anim assets, duplicate anim assets and retarget. And we're going to select this skeleton here, and then we will hit retarget. Let's change the name just so we can find it easier to flying idle. And then we'll slide this onto our flying character folder. And we are going to create another folder inside here, just call this animations. And then we'll put the flying idle in there. And now we'll go back to our animations here. And I have a few other ones that we need to convert, and then we should be all set to go. You can just hit control and then select each one that we'll need. We'll need move forward, move left, move right, and move backward. We're also going to need this rise ground one. We're going to need ground idle, landing, move right, ground backwards, ground forwards, ground left, and that should be it. And then we're going to right click, we will we'll retarget, duplicate again, select our skeleton, and then all of these duplicated assets should show up when we select the content folder here. All the retargeted animations always show up just in the content folder instead of where the parent assets are from. So let's select all those and we're going to put them in our animations folder. Move here. 
the next thing that we need to do is we're going to go back into our flying character folder and we are going to create a blend space real quick so right click in the content browser grab animation blend space and we want to make sure that we are using the right skeleton now since we retargeted the skeleton we don't need to use the flying mage animation skeleton just the standard so we'll open that one up and let's just call this bs underscore ground mage so we'll open this one up All right, and the first thing that we want to do is we want to rename our horizontal axis to direction and our vertical axis to speed let's change the minimum value to negative 180 the maximum value to 180 and then we'll do the same thing with, with the speed axis as well negative 180, 180 and now we'll slide our animations in since we're working on ground first let's grab our ground idle drag that to the center let's grab move right here put that on the right backwards here put left over here and the last one we need is forward and then we can test it by moving this green around just to make sure that we're going in the right direction. So left, right, we're going right, forward, forward, backward, backward. Looks like we're all set. So we'll go ahead and save that one. And then we'll go back and we're going to create a second blend space, which is going to be our animations for when we're in the air. Let's look at the same skeleton. Let's rename this BS underscore flight mage. We'll open that up. Same thing as before. Change the horizontal axis to direction. And then negative 180, maximum 180. Vertical axis to speed. And now we'll find our new idle. The flying idle is the one we want to use for that. And then we've got our move backwards, our move forwards, left, and right. Now again, once again, we can test that backwards, forwards, left and right, and perfect. So we'll save that. And the next thing that we need is we're going to create our animation blueprint, which is going to control our uh, animations both in the air and on the ground. So we'll right click, go back to animation, animation blueprint, and let's make sure that we're using the standard skeleton here. We're going to call this ABP Flying Mage. Uh, I had a comment in a previous video where somebody was asking me what the, uh, the ABP and BS and BP, what all those stand for. And I just use those to uh, help me keep track of what types of assets these are. So a BS is going to stand for Blend Space. ABP is going to be your Animation Blueprint. WBP is Widget Blueprint. And then uh, BP for Blueprint. Those are a few others. And I, again, I just use that for my own personal organization. And uh, you can you can name your assets however you like, but that's just how I like to do them. So we'll open up our animation blueprint here. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to add a state machine. Let's just call it locomotion. And we'll connect that to our final pose. Open up locomotion. Track off the entry point, and we are going to add a new state here, and we're just going to call this idle walk run. And then we'll open this up, and this is where we're going to put that ground blend space here. And then go ahead and promote direction and speed to variables, and those are going to align with the speed and direction that we had in our blend space. There we go, promote to variable. Call this one speed. Just separate them. Let's connect it to the final pose. Then we'll go back. Now from here we need to connect our uh, ground-based animations with our flight animations. And how we're going to do that is, along with the other animations that we transferred, we have an ascend animation and a descend animation for uh, taking off and landing. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag off a vital walk run, add a new state that we're just going to call ascend. We'll create another state. And we'll just call this flight idle. Drag off the flight idle. Another state, call this descend. And then connect descend back to our idle walk run. And then we'll throw in our animations. So for ascend, we need our. Oh, looks like we got the wrong rise here. So I'm going to go back to our animations. 
in place, and we need to find a send. Oh, take off right here. Okay. So we're going to right click, retarget again, select our skeleton, and we're going to move that back into our animations folder here. Come back to our flying character and our blend space, and let's grab that takeoff. There we go. I'm just going to plug this in. Now we want to make sure that the uh, loop animation is not checked because we only want this to do that once. Okay, and then we'll go back, go to our flight idle, and this is where we're going to put our flight blend space. And we can just use the same variables for direction and speed here that we've used before. Connect that. There we go. Let's go back, descend, and here's landing. Plug this in. Once again, we want loop animation unchecked. We'll go back. Now, if you notice here, in between each of the different states, we've got a transition rule. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, set those transition rules. So let's start with this one down here. Now, to transition into our, um, our takeoff animation, we just want to attach that to a variable asking for flying or not. So let's promote that to a variable. And we're just going to call this is flying with a question mark just to separate it from our the character blueprint. And then for this next one here, what we're going to do instead is we are going to right click and hit relevant time remaining. This one right here for relevant time remaining ascend. And we're going to get a less than sign here. And we'll connect that. And now what we're going to do in the less than sign is we're going to put in a 0.15, which means once you get to 85% of the animation, you're going to transition from the blend space to the animation here, or from the animation to the next blend space, sorry. So we're going to go back, let's go into our, uh, our flight idle here. And now for this one, we're going to do another check to see if we're in the air, but instead we're going to check if we are not flying. So we'll drag off of the flying variable, let's type in not. Grab a not boolean and let's plug that in for our results. And then the last transition rule is going to be kind of like the other time remaining, but this one is going to be uh, for descend. And time remaining, we need another less than. Set that to 0.15 again. Try to organize this a little bit. We'll go back. Now that all those are done, we're going to go ahead and save. And we need to connect all these values to the animation blueprint. So let's hit event graph. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to right click here and we're going to hit try get pawn owner. There we go. And we'll drag off of this. We're going to get an is valid node just to make sure that we are uh, actually working with the asset that we intend to. Oops, wrong one. We want the is valid with the white question mark there. Connect to the executables. Now we're also going to drag off of the try get pawn owner again. We're going to get movement component. We're going to drag off of get movement component and type in is flying. And we are going to connect that to our is flying variable here. So we'll go ahead and alt drag that in. Connect all the dots here. And then we're going to drag off of try get pawn owner and we are going to get velocity. And then from get velocity, we are going to get the vector length and connect this to our speed variable. So we'll alt drag in speed and connect this. And then we're going to go back to our velocity and we're going to drag off and type in calculate direction. And we'll plug that in. Now another thing that we need is we want to make sure that our character is facing where we want them to face while we're flying. The next thing that we need is we're going to go off of try get pawn owner and we are going to get our actor rotation. And then plug that in for our base rotation. And that should be it for now. So let's compile and then we'll save. And now we'll go into our third person character and let's create the functionality to fly. So we'll go back to our event graph. We're not going to use jumps, so let's disconnect these. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to switch into flight mode by pressing the F key. So we'll right click, type in F key, plug that in. 
And the easiest way to do this, I think, is to uh, use a flip-flop node. And what this is going to do is the first time we press the F key, we're going to switch to that flying blend space. And then when we press it again, it'll switch us back to our ground-based movement here. So the next thing we need is we need to grab our character movement here. And we're going to drag off of this. And we're going to say set movement mode. And then let's go ahead and uh, copy this and paste it so we have both of them here. Plug character movement into the second one. We will plug B into the here, A into this one. And for A, we want, we want the first time that we press it to be switching to our flying animations. So we're going to select that. And the second time we want to go back into our walking mode. So we're going to select walking here for this one. And then we can compile it and then we will save. And then let's test it out real quick. All right, so now we can walk around like we want here. Now if we press the F key, we'll switch into flight mode, and then we will start flying here. And then if we press F again, we will land. Perfect. Now we'll escape and we'll try out a couple new ways to do this. Now the next way I wanted to look at flying is uh, an idea that I kind of got from uh, the game Ultimate Alliance, if you guys have ever played that. Uh, in that one, what you would do is the first time you press the jump button, you'd do a standard jump, but if you pressed it again, then uh, it would put you into flight mode if your character could fly. And I kind of liked that way of doing things, so uh, let's try that one next. But in order to do that, we're going to go back into our animation blueprint and we're going to make a few changes here. Now first things first, we're going to need to create a new boolean variable. And we're going to call this is falling. We'll select that. And we need to drag off of our movement component and select is falling. That's alt drag in is falling. Plug calculate direction into that. And then is falling into our is falling variable. Now the next step in our double jump flight activation is we need to actually add uh, jump animations. So right off of idle walk run, we're going to create another little diamond here of animations. So we'll drag off of idle walk run, and we're going to add a new state. And this is just going to be jump start. And then off of jump start, we're going to and we'll do another state machine or another state. Call this mid jump. Our last state, we're going to do jump end and connect that back to our idle walk run. And then just like before, we're going to put in our uh, transition rules. And this is where we're going to plug in our is falling here for the first transition rule. Second one is going to be kind of like the second transition rule with our uh, transitioning to our flight blend space. So we're going to do a relevant time remaining jump start. Actually, hold on. I believe that is what we need to do, but we have to actually have to put in our animations here first, too. We're going to do third person jump start here. We're going to plug that in. And just like before, we want to make sure that this is not looping. Go back into our mid jump. We're going to jump loop. Jump end. Kind of breezing through this because I think uh, we've already seen kind of how to do this, but uh, it still needs to get done. So I'll get back into here. We're going to do our relevant time remaining again. For jump start. I'm going to get another less than symbol. 0.15. Our mid jump we also want another is not falling then another relevant time remaining for jump end 0.15 we'll plug this in for our transition rule and now we have our jump ability here, so let's compile and we'll save. The last step that we have is to create the functionality in our third person character. So we'll go back, and we're going to just go right under our uh, F key function here, and we are going to type in space bar, 
Then spacebar is usually what we use to jump. I figured that's going to be a good, a good way to go. Now, as we still want to be able to jump with this, we are going to have to do a check, which we'll use a branch for. And what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that if we're already in the air and we press the jump button, then it's going to make us fly. But if we're on the ground and we just hit the jump button, we're just going to jump. So off of the condition, we're going to get an ore boolean. And then we also need our character movement again. And first we're going to make sure that we'll, that uh, we're not falling. So let's get is falling. Drag off of our character movement again and get is flying. And we'll plug all those in. And now what this is saying is, is if it's not true that we're either falling or flying already, then we're just going to jump. So we'll drag off of the false and we're just going to type in jump. But if it's true that we are either in the air or flying, what we're going to do is we're kind of going to copy this. We're going to take our flip-flop node again, and we're going to copy this here, and we're going to drag that in right here. But to make sure it kind of doesn't look weird, what we're going to do is we're going to change is walking for the second time we hit the uh, jump button in the air. We're going to set that to falling instead, so we'll fall before we jump into this transition. And then we're going to put in a delay node. Let's just set that for a second. And then we're going to drag off of our character movement again. And we're going to set movement mode one more time. But this time we are going to set this to walking. Now another thing that you could do is uh, you could put another branch check in to make sure that we're not falling anymore. And then if we're not falling anymore or flying, then um, it'll set this to walking. In fact, actually, we could just do that. So grab this, and we can copy it. I kind of didn't really think about this until now. So we'll plug this in here. So we'll make sure that we're not falling or flying. We'll plug the false into here instead. Maybe we'll just put a simple 0.2 second delay just to make sure there's a little bit of a separation. And that way, once we're back on the ground, we'll go back to walking. So let's compile that, and then we'll save, and then let's test it out. Okay, so now we're back in here. Now once again we can walk around, we can jump, and then we'll land again. Now if we double jump, we'll be in the air. And now we're doing all of our flying stuff way up here. Now if we press the space bar again, we'll start falling, and then we'll land and uh, switch into our walking animation again. So that actually worked out pretty good. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you have any other power ideas that you think would be cool to see in a video, go ahead and leave it in the comments below, and I'll figure out how to do it or point you in the right direction. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Super Unreal Powers.